<laughs> in studio with us, Delegate Chuck Hurst. Chuck, good to see you again, man. Good morning. Glad to see you guys here today. All right, I'm going to get this out of the way right now. Because I know Brad Knoll's probably signing on from Tomahawk. <laughs> Give me my Brad Knoll update. What do you got okay. for me? What's, what's uh, the range looking like? <clears throat> what I got for him is is nothing really new other than the the last official word that I had is they were applying for grants to fund it at, at, at this point. Oh, that's, so, that's good progress, though. Yes, yes. So hopefully sometime uh, before summer's over, hopefully sometimes uh, uh, they have some grant money and then we can maybe get started with it. Chuck, uh, in the odd stat category of odd stat categories, I, I was looking up uh, Eric Householder one day on the House of Delegates list, and I noticed that the names that start with H in the House of Delegates go on forever. So I literally counted, and there are 17 delegates of the 100 whose last names start with the letter H. Nobody else is close. I think like the next letter is close for like eight or something like that. Because they then literally sat down and looked at everybody's last name and what it started with to find out how un unusual that would be. But there's 17 of you that start with the letter H. I don't know if you ever noticed that, but when you guys, when you guys do roll call in the house, the H has taken off a lot of your day. I I I knew that there was probably quite a few. I yeah. never I never really looked to see to at it. At, yeah, because you're a busy in, man. The eyes that you did. I but, have time. But yeah, yeah, I knew there was quite a few. That is uh, that is just as impressive as the guy who discovered radon. Yes, I have to say. And by the way, there's a comment on our Facebook page about, about the guy that uh, was responsible for radon. I don't know if you saw it. It was, it was way up uh, toward the beginning of the comment section. So I'm going to try to find it uh, if I can. Here we go. Chris Chernock posted that the first person to discover the noble gases was Henry Cavendish in the late. 180th century. Now, I think you meant 18th century because we haven't gotten to 180 of them just yet. Cavendish distinguished these elements by chemically removing all oxygen and nitrogen from a container of air. The nitrogen was oxidized by NO2 by electric discharges and absorbed by a sodium hydroxide solution. And little known fact, that was uh, Butch Cavendish's brother, right? Probably not. <laughs> So, anyway, it's good to see Chris is the most intelligent guy in the room today because I would have never gotten that. Or he looked it up faster than that. That is, no, that's really <laughs> impressive. Thank you, yeah, Chris. Very nice. yeah. well, well done, Chris. Uh, Chuck, I don't know if you saw this or, or not, but uh, Shepherd University recently had a press, uh, re, or at least released a statement that they're going to be closing down, or at least Mary Hendricks, the president, is going to be recommending to the Board of Governors that they close down the Shepherd University Martinsburg Center. Uh, and obviously that will unemploy anybody who is employed at the Martinsburg Center. Uh, only, I assume they will try to find them other jobs, or they're not going to be able to. And this has to do with universities around the state are experiencing financial difficulties. We saw Morgantown had a $6 million uh, deficit. I think Shepherd's is, is three. Is the legislature aware of these financial difficulties? distresses these universities are going through? Is, is there currently any discussion about this? I, I'm not really privy to a lot of discussion. I, I mean, I think the legislature in general was, is generally aware of that. Um, I'm assuming that much of it is because of uh, lower enrollment, mm -hmm. uh, which, which has been ongoing. And, and it's not just the um, uh, to West Virginia. I mean, that's across the country from, my, from what I understand. Um, uh, I, I guess a lot of that has to do with, uh, you know, simply probably a lot of kids aren't, youngsters aren't taking, uh, going to college and uh, getting into the trades instead. And, and, in fact, West Virginia has uh, work, worked on some issues there in the legislature to make uh, trade schools and what have you more, more available. You have an interim session coming up, and some speculate the governor may actually call a special session with that as well. Do you have any idea if that subject, not necessarily Shepherd, but the universities around the state, if that'll be part of the interim session, the financial I, situation? I have no idea. I know, I, I guess I know that they're, they're working on some issues. Uh, I hear that there's probably going to be a number of bills and that we probably will have a special session, but that, that call actually has not been made yet, so I, you know, I, I actually do not know. You, you still serve on the jails and prisons committee as well. So we know that that's an issue. Is I have to assume that's got to be part of the discussion as you go in in August. I would think that's going to be the pro one of the, probably the primary issue. I suspect that's going to call a special session. I would imagine. What would you like to see happen there? 
Chuck, long term to try to fix that situation? Well, I um, and, and and I'm not privy to the, the discussions that's really been going on with that. However, uh, publicly, I guess I've heard that uh, uh, they're looking at doing some comprehensive fixes across the board with uh, corrections. Uh, one one of the issues would be uh, pay. Uh, I'm not sure what else what else is is going to be going on. Probably probably something to do with working conditions and, mm-hmm. and retention. I, I would imagine of employees. Uh, what that looks like, I do not know. Are we still staffing with uh, National Guard at uh, many of the prisons? To my knowledge, yes, we are. It's still going. And my understanding is the National Guard is paid by the feds. Is that is that correct, or does West Virginia foot part of that bill, too? Do you know? I do not know the answer. Okay. Matt Miller. When you talk about a comprehensive fix to needing more workers within our, our jail system, uh, obviously pay is is one of those issues. Are we in a position right now? I know there's a lot of the surplus money, but surplus money is not necessarily what you want to put into raising salaries because that may not be there in years to come. So is there a, a catch-22, if you will, in increasing some of that pay? Um, I don't know that there's a catch-22. I mean, what you're, what you're bringing up there is absolutely a concern because raising pay is base building the budget, and uh, uh, we're, we're going to need that money every year going forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, with that said, though, I, I think we're going to be looking at a uh, surplus in revenue still going forward for mm-hmm. probably for the foreseeable future, I think. Uh, uh, there's there's a lot going on across the state, a lot of economic development that is in process right now that is not online yet, that we're not receiving revenue from yet. Uh, uh, like uh, Commercial Metals is supposed to do a, a break ground this week in, uh, up at Spring Mills on, on that plant. Uh, and that's, uh, that's 235 jobs, I believe, the average salary above 70000 a year. Uh, so, so there's a lot going on in that aspect. You got the new core and everything that's going to come in with new core mm-hmm. down there. So, going going forward, I think in the next half a dozen years, I, I think we're looking pretty good. I believe at this point. As far as working conditions, you mentioned that as well. Are you hearing a lot in relation to those working conditions within our jails, and how do you maybe improve that? I mean, obviously, it's a difficult job, no matter what. Yes, uh, I mean. And, and, and I'm not well versed on what all's mm-hmm. bad about it. Right. Uh, I, I can imagine some of it. Uh, and, and right now, everybody's overworked big time, and, and, and that that's a huge factor. Right. Uh, so so that definitely needs to be addressed. And, and what it's going to take there is going to take more employees to address that. Mm-hmm. We we need to get up to uh, uh, fully staffed, or at least somewhere yeah. close, certainly above the 50 or 60 right. percent mark. Jonathan Bott, unless you were done by No, go, I, was, I was just going to ask, though, you, you, you mentioned heading into an interim session and not sure yet whether it would be called into a special session. How much time do, would you get to be able to be prepared and know, hey, this is a special session, let's, let's be ready for these particular issues? If I recall correctly, for the governor to call a special session, mm-hmm. it has to be at least three days' notice, I think. Three days doesn't sound like a lot of time. It's not a lot of time to get everything <laughs> right. right. I, I agree, and and however, a lot of that stuff is going on behind the scenes right, right now. Yeah, as I understand uh, it, Chuck, he wouldn't call for a special session unless leadership had already been involved in some serious discussions to make sure that subject of the special session could get across the goal line. Yes, I, I, I believe that's fair to say. I, I think everybody looks at that when 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 they're working on the issues mm-hmm. and look. They, I mean. In reality, what's the sense to call a special session if you don't have a consensus on, on, on what, you, what you're wanting to do? So uh, to save taxpayer money, uh, that is certainly an issue that goes on behind the scenes to try to make sure there's a consensus mm-hmm. uh, before a special session is called. Yeah, because you folks get paid when you go in for a special session or an interim. Yes, and, mm-hmm. and quite often in special session, what I've seen quite often in special session, uh, the consensus is usually try, tries try to have the consensus across the board so that uh, it, it, it can be one of the things sometimes where maybe we can suspend the rules and get everything done in a single day rather than uh, nor- normally a, a bill would have to be read three different days. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if, if we can suspend the rules, we can speed that process up. But, but that takes, uh, I think, two-thirds or so of the legislature to uh, suspend the rules. And it's, it's kind of a high bar. And, and, 
and 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 I think uh, we we look at that as um, uh, we try we try to have everybody on board, or, or or at least a huge majority of everybody on board on the bills before we do that. Is this coming session interim session in Charleston? I know some have been in other parts around the state during the course of the the summer months. Yes, we'll be in Charleston okay. on this one. Last one we were in Huntington. Uh, and we have one this fall, I can't remember if it's October or November, that will be up in Wheeling. JB? Oh, it's good to get around the different parts of the state. Huntington, Huntington is quite a haul from here. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, I guess it's another hour for me probably, or, or, or pretty <laughs> close. Least. It's about as far of a drive in West Virginia as you can get from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Pretty close, I would think. Yeah. Without a doubt, because it's not as far to the, the upper part of the northern panhandle. Chuck, let me ask you this. Um, we've talked about the, the, the prison stuff and the fact that we're really short on prison. Prison guards, and it's, I mean, we've got the National Guard in there working. What are, what is something else in our state that you see that the legislature really needs to tackle that's, that's not, that, that's not happening, that, that, that is really something we're falling down on? Um, that's a good question for well, me. I, for, pre I appreciate that. I'd hate to ask not a good question. <laughs> for me personally, I think it's some liberty type issues. Okay. Um, and 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 I have a number of bills. I I think it's time that we start uh, uh, trying to do away with some of this Orwellian stuff that that, that goes on. And and what I mean by that is, um, I mean, we most people spend the majority of their day on a camera somewhere. Uh, there's cameras everywhere, mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's fine to some degree. But uh, we, we see things going on such as a, uh, third parties that hold your private information, say cell phone carriers, for instance. The mm -hmm. uh, government wants access to uh, where your phone has been pinged at and what have you. Uh, quite often these, these third party people that hold your information, they'll just relinquish that information to the government without a warrant or any real just cause. Uh, I think that should be addressed uh, to, to protect uh, people's rights there. A lot of that was liberalized after the Department of Homeland Security was established, was it not? Uh, yeah, I, I believe so. Uh, uh, the Patriot Act and mm -hmm. Homeland Security, uh, there, there was a lot of liberties lost uh, uh, right after 9-11, actually, with, with, with the inception of... Uh, those agencies and would you have liked to have seen some of that sunsetted i mean obviously after 9 11 we were all on alert and trying to make sure that this wouldn't happen again and now we're 22 years later would you like to see some of that sunsetted uh i i believe some things yeah i mean uh, uh the big concern the big concern i have with it i i get the idea and i get the safety aspect of it why we were doing it um but as always, it seems uh, so many of the first things that happened, we saw abuse by our government of, of these programs. We saw uh, one, one of the first ones that I recall uh, was uh, uh, this, I guess, this me mega data that they were collecting on everybody, that uh, they started sifting through that and started looking for a possibility of somebody that maybe was uh, selling drugs, uh, look for indicators of that. And then they would see indicators of that and think that was going on. And, and they actually would relay that information to local authorities, wherever this was in the country, and they would, they would have uh, the local authorities would t quite often take and uh, initiate a traffic stop of the individual that, that, the, that this information was on. And then once that traffic stop was initiated, that gave them the grounds to start opening up an investigation on, on the individual. And it, all, and it all started with this mega data that they, that they were looking at. Delegate Chuck Hurst, our guest here on the program. Go ahead, Jibby. So they're just looking at sort of an algorithm and saying, okay, these, these things are popping up in this data and then just passing it on without, without, any, um, without any, any real evidence. Without any, I mean, they're just, they're just basically pulling it out of the sky and saying, hey, you guys should probably take a look at this. Yeah, that, that, that was basically the gist of the, one of the first things sure. that they were caught doing. And, and there, there's been some other stuff as, right. as, as well. Some of it, I, I think everybody's aware of it to some degree or another. A lot of it's been in the news at different times. Uh, and, then, and then the big concerning factor is what, what, what do they do that we don't know about yet? Well, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think we have to just, <clears throat> just realize that whatever we do is sort of being looked at unless you're, you know, out in Back Creek Valley or something or Sleepy Creek fishing.
And then, and, and who and then, knows out there if they got cameras up these days? There's one thing I can't stand. It's a bunch of people observing me, say, between 8 and 10 a.m. every weekday morning, Monday through Friday. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> uh, and if you want to tell those of you who are observing Rob today, if you want to tell 10 of your friends that they should observe Rob also, we, we, we'll, we, we'll, we would object. We, yes, yes. Uh, um, what, let me ask you this. Education, we're still... I mean, we talked a little bit about with, uh, about the schools and about how the colleges are struggling. There are a lot of these gigantic online universities now. Uh, American Public University we have out of Charlestown. Liberty University. Phoenix. Has the University of Phoenix. Liberty's over 100,000 students now. I don't think so much that less kids are going to school. I think less parents are uh, deciding that they want to spend a bunch of money on room and board. And the kids can go to school online, still work, still live at home. Where do you see, I mean, I know there was, a, there was an article last week on Metro News talking about three or four of our colleges, Alderson, Broadus being one, um, and a couple others, where they were talking about they may have to close. Where, uh, I mean, do you think we need a, a contraction of, a contraction of schools in West Virginia? I, th I think broadly across the country, that's probably exactly where we're heading with, with uh, the new technology and everything. That uh, I think as we go forward, we're going to continue to see big changes in how we educate people. And that is likely to look along the lines of that we don't need many of these uh, uh, act actual institutions where somebody goes to uh, college or, or perhaps even schools at some point in the future. Well, I mean, I, I've taken some online classes, and, I mean, sometimes you, you, there'll be 30, 40 people in the class, and all you're doing is the professor's literally using a program where the professor's not actually doing anything, teaching anything. It was all, all online. I'm, I'm currently just, just finishing up an MBA program. And Congratulations, some, oh, Joe. Thank you. I've got one, one class left. Nice. But they are some of these classes. You, you pay for the class, and then you get in, and the, the book that you're having to pay for is this hundred and fifty dollar computer thing, that literally is the entire class and is is everything. I mean, you do the, the tests, you do the quizzes, you do everything on there. I can't figure out what the professor does. I mean, I, I guess they're the one at the end who just sort of takes attendance. What it's, do you think it's, he does? It's the button at the end. But I mean, I, I think a lot of people are moving toward that type of education, and I'm not sure that's great. Um, I, I think kids kids miss out when they're they're not getting in person education. What what do you feel? I mean, I mean we have we have a lot we have a lot more colleges in the state of West Virginia than we probably have kids who are going to go to brick and mortar school at this point. Has the legislature talked at all about contracting and getting rid of some of the the institutions, the state colleges? I, I don't recall of any real talk about that that, that I was privy to, and, and of course I'm not on education committee uh, this, this, this term. Uh, so wh whether any of that got talked about in the education committee, I, you know, I, I, I don't really know. I don't recall hearing anything. Um, but, um, you know, change is often scary. And, and there's often things that we don't like about change, that it, it, at least at the time when change is occurring, like perhaps job loss, perhaps uh, colleges going away. Um, uh, I, I think it's just part of uh, technology and part of it advancing forward. Now, is this going to be the? Is, is this going to be what it really looks like? Uh, you know, ten years from now, I'm not quite sure, uh, but I do believe that we're heading in some direction that's that those change, some of those changes are going to be real. Chuck, you also serve on workforce development. What does that committee do mainly? Uh, much, much of it has been, um, oh, I'm trying to remember what some of the bills were that we, that we ran through workforce. Um, oh, geez, I can't, I, I can't recall them exactly. But it's, it's, it's generally going to be things that, that affect the workforce, uh, some, some laws, regulations. I, I do recall there was one, there was an issue about drug testing, with uh, um, oh geez, uh, with with this one entity and uh, uh, and the bill had the had this drug testing in it and and it, there was a problem created. I, I do recall that the problem with the medical marijuana testing it, it, it created a problem there. Uh, although the problem still exists because it was more of a federally mandated thing. It, right. it, it had to do with CDL drivers, if I recall correctly, mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or critical critical type jobs like uh, heavy machinery operators and, and, and what have you. Uh, and, and that's something that's more mandated by the feds. But 
but but the, the the thing that stuck in my mind on that one was simply that uh, this idea of, uh, of of states legalizing marijuana and still federally illegal it, it creates right. it creates a lot of lot of crazy traps out there for a lot of a lot of different especially people especially if you're trying to get a gun mm. uh, yes right yes absolutely uh, I, my understanding is a day and a year after you give up that uh, medical card. Uh, uh, you would be a prohibited person from purchasing a firearm. I've talked to some folks recently who have an interest in, and I know Craig Blair brought this up over a year ago, reforming unemployment compensation in the state. Number of weeks, amount of money, whatever. Have you gotten involved in any of those discussions, Chuck? Uh, not recently. I mean, we, we had that bill last session. I think it was last session. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do recall of it. Um, uh I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I, I think it lowers cost on the uh, unemployment insurance for employers, which is is going to generally be a good thing, I think, uh, for for people. Um, the the concerning issue, and I found it concerning to to some degree as well, was the idea that uh, that when we set set this, that what works for say the Eastern Panhandle is going to be a lot different than. Than what is going to be in southern West Virginia, as far as uh, uh, unemployment rates, because because everything was going to be based on the unemployment rates, how many weeks you would be able to draw, mm -hmm. and uh, up here, you know, the un unemployment rate might be uh, three percent, and you get southern West Virginia, maybe it's five point five percent or six percent or something like that, uh, and, uh, and and that just highlights a, a, a lot of a lot of the problems in the state of West Virginia uh, th that are kind of regional. Mm -hmm. um, like like locality pay that is basically needed in the Eastern Panhandle, um, and uh, it's a whole different story when you get in Southern West Virginia or other parts of the state. John, I saw you put your hand up. Well, other parts of the state, it's a lot harder to find a job. I mean, around here, at this point, knock on, I believe this is for Micah, but we'll call it wood. <laughs> Let's call um, it granite for the audience out there. Granite, yes, <laughs> granite. We're here in this ivory tower with the granite. Uh, no, but I mean, it's um, there are parts of the state where there aren't jobs mm -hmm. where you know people maybe need a little bit longer on unemployment to find something. I mean, we're we're very thankful here. We we have more jobs than we have people in this region. Yes, uh, we're, we're we're very very fortunate on that. I'm I'm glad to see some areas of the state getting some big business coming in that's going to supply some jobs. Um, uh, uh, I guess Mason and Jackson County are going to be big yeah. winners with Newcore and uh, the Berkshire Hathaway deals. Uh, there, there's going to be a, there's going to be a lot of jobs coming to that area, uh, but but we we need some more of that in some other areas of the state. I got a, I got a question, Chuck. Are we having? I mean, in the areas where there's there's really there really a dearth of jobs, are we having the same kind of struggle in those areas to get prison guards as we are up here, or is the fact that the unemployment rate's a lot higher and there aren't as many jobs down there that where those jobs may be more attractive? Are there areas of the state where they're not struggling to get prison guards? My understanding, they're struggling statewide on that. Okay, so. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much of it. I, I don't guess it's really an unemployment or, or job availability issue, um, you know, because certainly uh, uh, those jobs are available across the state and people do not want them, apparently. Yeah. Uh, so um, it, it, it part of it's going to be money. But, you know, there's there's a, there's a lot of other aspects there and, and probably some that I'm not even aware of yet. Matt, I think you played addressed. a softball game at a, a prison compound once. Did you have a desire to stay there and? Be a guard? Um, no, I, I, I did not. It, it was a unique experience um, to go over and to play. Uh, that was Roxbury over in Hagerstown. We went over, I think, three times over the course of two different summers. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you the Red Bat story sometime. <laughs> did, you, did you sing some uh, Johnny Cash in your head while you were there? No, no, I did not. I do remember the first time going through, though. You, you put all your stuff into a locker, and then a guy put a stamp on your arm. And, you know, I've never been before. So he puts one stamp, and I start walking away, and he says, uh, young man, come back. I went, you already got me. And he said, no, 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 I need to do it all up and down your arm because you're about to go play ball, sweat, be in the dirt and all of that. When you come back through and we shine the light on it, if we don't see that, you don't leave. Please, put it on both arms. <laughs> put, put, put it on both arms. As a matter of fact, just douse me in that paint. <laughs> Chuck, final word is yours, sir. Oh, 
I'm, I'm actually looking forward to get back to next session. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll be glad to get to in the interims and, and, and get started on, on some of the some of the bills that I want to uh, work on next session. And uh, I'm just looking forward to uh, next session right now. Are you going to run for re-election? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. I, I pre-filed. Uh, I pre-filed undeclared, but uh, I'm, I'm going to run for the delegate seat in the 95th district. 